How's it going, guys? I'm Josh Pacheco. I have a show with my name on it. I do University of Hawaii baseball. You have questions. I think I have answers. Welcome to lunch break. Gosh, well, normally at this time, I'm on the air. So my lunch break is later than everybody else's. But if I had a go-to, there is a place I shall not name plate lunch shop that has a really good spicy Korean chicken. Uh, I go all rice, no mac salad. Very, very good. A typical day, I'm usually into the office probably around 6 a.m. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that we do around, uh, you know, airing Hawaii News Now. There's a lot of prep work for the show, um, paperwork, always fun. Um, and then during the week, um, in pre-COVID times, we'd have a day during the week where we'd be at Lesmer Kami Stadium. We'd meet with the coaches. We'd meet with the players. COVID turned that into Zoom interviews, so we had less driving. And, um, and then a lot of other time spent prepping. Uh, we'll talk to opposing coach from, from the other team for the series. Uh, I've got my game board that usually takes me a couple of hours to do prior to the series and about an hour every day prior to the next game. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff. And then, uh, you know, television watching at night to cool down. But other than that, uh, yeah, usually pretty busy. And then add in University of Hawaii softball, some some high school stuff here and there. It's uh -huh. better to have too much to do than nothing to do. And so I, I kind of enjoy uh, every year from February to about the end of May and maybe one day into June when uh, we've got so many games and, and so many things going on that sometimes it's just hard to kind of look back and take a breath. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I know you, I mean, obviously you're a sports fan, but I also know you have a little bit of a news background too, right? You used to do news reports back when you were on the Big Island. And so transitioning like our CBS 1500 station, that's our news and information station. That must be kind of exciting for you. Yes. Um, I am a, I wouldn't call myself a news junkie. But I certainly do take a lot of it in. Uh, when I was on the Big Island before moving up here, I was a, uh, a news anchor for the uh, for the stations that I worked for, and even did uh, uh, like special report coverage. Like we were on the air twenty four seven when we had a when we had a hurricane coming by, and so you know no commercials, no nothing, talking to callers, all that stuff, stuff I enjoy, and and a lot of that stuff too, kind of like in sports, and I think it kind of mixes very well, where you know it there's a lot of things happening and you never know kind of where you're going to turn sometimes where things are going to take you with some of those kinds of events. Um, you know, there was one day and I guess I'll tell this story. I was doing a high school game. Uh, I called high school sports on the big Island along with UH Hilo. I was doing a high school game at Kealakehe high school. And during that game, I think it was in the first quarter, there were tsunami sirens going off uh, and there was a tsunami warning. And the game kept going. <laughs> we, we continued on. We were going into the second quarter. I've got my bosses calling me because at, at that time, I'm also news director of the station. And I'm on the other side of the island from where our, our main studios are. So I'm about an hour and a half away. And we're still going. I can't get off the air. We're calling a football game. And this was the, in fact, this is the BIF championship uh, to go along with that. So it was the, the, the league championship. So finally, everybody comes to their senses. They call, they, they pause the game and we had to come back next week, but it gets better. So obviously with a tsunami warning, our stations go into simulcast coverage and everybody's on the air. Normally I'd be leading that, but I'm 90 minutes away from the studio doing a football game. We wrap up and I end up going back on the air because at Kealakehe High School, they had one of the Red Cross shelters. So we, we packed up. We actually stayed on the air for a little while. We did some news coverage from the press box, which also was the athletic director's office. And he was getting tired. So he wanted to go home, packed up there. We ended up going to the shelter. First, every time I've been to, a, to an evacuation or emergency shelter. And we set up in the shelter. Uh, we did some interviews. We were, there was a few people there. And it was probably close. I want to say it was somewhere closer to 11 p.m. midnight or so. Um, they had the all clear, got back to the hotel, uh, cause we didn't drive over after that. And, and by that time things were kind of picking back up again. And, um, and then, and then it was, it was it from there, but probably the most exciting night mixing news and sports together 
but there's I, I've always been interested in kind of the day to day stuff and, and, and the things that are going on and, and mixing that with sports. It only just seems natural. <laughs> OK, well, I know one other fact about you. Not only do you like sports and you like news, but way back when, when you, when you were little, you weren't interested in being the next Bobby Curran or Jim Leahy or Don Robbs. You were wanted to be more like the next Guy Hagi, <laughs> right? Isn't that true? Tell me about that. This is true. So I was interested in the weather. Um, man, and, and you know what? That kind of works into doing baseball and softball too because they're always watching the weather radar when things are kind of sketchy in some days. <laughs> um, but I remember, I think it was in fourth or fifth grade, that I was so interested in the weather that I wanted to give weather reports to the class. Now, I don't know what I was thinking at that time, but uh, my teacher said, all right, if you do your homework, if you, you get your grades are good, uh, we'll let you do a weather report like once a week or whatever. And mm -hmm. so I took care of that. During a recess, I would put a bunch of like temperatures on the map of the different places across the continental US and whatever. And then I'd give like a weather report for a couple minutes and it probably lasted a couple of weeks, but it was something I was really, really interested in. And uh, I don't know that I'd ever have a career there. So thank goodness I got away from that and, uh, and turned to sports and turned to news and, and DJing like Chris Hart did back in the day on the old music stations. Uh, because I think uh, I'd, I'd have a very different and probably not so fun path if I was trying that other route. Let's get right into the questions that our listeners have submitted. Are you ready? I hope so. <laughs> Elbert from Honolulu asks, Josh, what's your favorite part of your job? My favorite part of my job is, is really play by play um, and being at games and describing what's going on. It's one of the things I have, like even going back to when I used to like weather, I did like sports play by play as well and, and was interested in that and, you know, I think even going back to this year, uh, taking that part of what I love to the next level and being able to travel this year and being able to go to different baseball parks, go to different basketball gyms and, and volleyball venues and, and calling games, it's a thrill. Um, you know, you're, you're lucky because you get to do something, not have to buy a ticket to do it, uh, but also to, to form connections, you know, to get to describe you know, a lot of exciting things, a Cole Kaler uh, hitting for the cycle, uh, which is something that I don't think I've ever gotten to call was a cycle before this year. Um, you know, a, a, a four hit day for a hitter, uh, you know, so many things, even going back to a couple of years ago, going to Oregon and, and going to the mat and calling a game there between Hawaii and Oregon and men's basketball. Um, it's, it's fun. It's, uh, it's never the same thing every day. And that's the thing that I think is, is also one of the, the best parts about it is, you know, when you go to the ballpark, it's going to be different. You're always going to be on your toes and it's going to make you think a little bit more about how you're going to go about your day. And it's exciting. And, and I enjoy that change of pace every day. And uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't know if I can go five, but the ones that come to mind right out of the gate, Mike Tirico, when he was here in Honolulu for the Pro Bowl, we talked to him, I think the Friday before the game, he was awesome. And look who and Mike Tirico has become something. <laughs> we had uh, uh, Joe Montana when he was uh, hawking Skechers. That was, uh, that was kind of cool. And um, man, I think those are the two best ones that, that come to mind, but we've had, and I'll, I'll give you one more Scotty Scott, who we just interviewed university of Hawaii baseball player is such a unique personality. And when you see that uh, on our YouTube page and you hear that on the radio, uh, you're going to enjoy that. Those are some of the three of the most favorite ones that do come to mind. I'd say, listen to a lot of the people who do it or watch a lot of people who do it and, um, and try to find, your voice in all of that. And, you know, go to games, have things in your head, um, do what Marv Albert did. You know, Marv Albert would go to games and he'd have a tape recorder that he'd take with him when he was like a teenager. And he uh, ended up giving it to someone at a radio station. And, and you know, six decades of work later, uh, Marv Albert's one of the best that's ever done NBA games. You know, for me, I went to college and uh, to the college radio station and I asked to, to try it out 
And I did. And that one year of doing games in a college radio station turned into uh, doing games now 15 years later. So, you know, listen to a lot of people and, and find your personality within it and, you know, try it out. I, I think it, uh, it can lead to a, a good career in doing stuff like this. Mm -hmm. You know, for, as far as play by play by play goes, um, do you have any, who were your influences? I loved John Miller. I still do. Uh, John Miller, of course, uh, San Francisco Giants play by play guy. One of the guys I listened to all the time, I would listen to Giants games on the radio when I was younger. And obviously that's, that's one of my favorite teams, but uh, his way of telling stories and his pronunciations um, were just incredible. And that tone of voice that he uses is perfect for the game. And then the other one, I, I, I love Mike Tirico and it was a thrill to interview him several years ago, but his style, the enthusiasm, the prep work that goes in and his versatility. Uh, I mean, he just did swimming trials uh, on NBC. I mean, his versatility is amazing. And there aren't many people who can say that and seamlessly go into a sport. And uh, those are the two that I've, I've most enjoyed and kind of like wanted to, to emulate based on, on their success and, and how they do it. Okay. Um, you know, you're going to get UH baseball questions. Of course. And Kavehi from Makakilo is asking, what's your take on the new UH baseball coach, Rich Hill? I'm excited about Rich Hill. His energy, I think, is infectious. Uh, we've seen that, I think, in some of the transfer portal uh, names that are coming to the University of Hawaii. Scotty Scott said, uh, said so himself. And if you know UH baseball, Scotty Scott has the kind of energy that could probably uh, light up an entire city when the power goes out from, uh, from our utility grid. But um, he said it himself. He loved Rich Hill's energy. And that kind of helped sway him to come back as, as he is. And that does resonate with players. Mike Brown had that uh, as an assistant coach at UH, and that was good with some of those players as well. And I think that energy, his love for the islands, his connections to the islands, even though he didn't live here, I think will resonate with a lot of people. And he has a winning track record, and it's exciting to see what comes of that. So uh, I think there's a lot of excitement, and, and you hear a lot of people say, you know, they're, they're excited for what's to come from those on the team to those who want to buy tickets. Uh, there's a really good feeling about what's to come with Rich Hill at the helm. Uh, how do you see the UH baseball team finishing this upcoming season? You know, it's really tough uh, because there's so much turnaround within the conference with the transfer portal. Um, you expect the usual suspects to come back, but also, uh, I can't wait to see what the non-conference schedule looks like. And I think that's a bigger part of the story. Conference schedules are going to be whittled down. It won't be 40 games anymore. Um, I, I think this team with all of the turnaround could be better than what you would expect a team with the kind of turnaround it has to be. I don't know if I want to predict the amount of wins because you do want to give a new coach and, and players time. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if in year one of the Rich Hill era that you see some signature wins and you see a team competing in the top half of the conference right away. Uh, and, and I think uh, that's the kind of energy and passion that Rich Hill says. He says he doesn't want to wait till year three or year four. He wants to win in year one. And given some of the work already done, there's, there's a decent chance of that. Oh, here's somebody we know. Tiff Wells. <laughs> Tiff asks, uh, Josh, what's your favorite road venue? from this past uh, baseball season? My favorite road venue from this past season. Well, um, I'd been to several venues twice, but I'll, I'll go with San Diego or actually, well, um, truthfully La Jolla, which is where UC San Diego is. It's not technically in San Diego, but uh, Rimac Arena is a really gorgeous arena. Uh, seats about 6,000 or so, I believe. Uh, they've done some renovations to that. Uh, was there for UH Men's Volleyball when they played the Tritons for a couple of games. And that place is beautiful. Uh, it, it, I think, you know, Tiff will get to see that. I'm sure he'll like it. And uh, if you haven't seen it on ESPN3, you'll enjoy that venue. I think if I'll give one more on an aside, uh, and, and that would be at Arizona State, uh, going, at, going to that field in Tempe. It was a really nice field. I mean, that's a place where, you know, greats like Barry Bonds have played and, and, and others. 
But the other thing I liked about that place, it'd be warm during the day and you get to the evening as the game's going on and you're cold as heck in a press box. And it's uh, one of the most comfortable climate changes you get. It was uh, really fun. So I think those are the two I'd give you. And we come to our last question. Brian from Kaimuki asked, uh, what's your dream job? Do you want to make it big on the mainland? And Brian, I can I can answer that for Josh. <laughs> when Josh signed our, when Josh joined our company, he signed the Hotel California deal. He What's can check mean? out. Any, he can check out anytime he wants, but he can never leave. <laughs> um, I'll I'll follow that answer by saying anybody in this profession. I think at, at the younger age of it wants to know how far they can go. Um, I would love to call a world series one day, uh, but Joe Buck is also really young and he probably has 30 more years of it uh, on the television side, but on, on the radio, which I love, I love the radio medium. Um, I've done very little television, but I, if I had an opportunity to call a world series or even a college world series on radio, you know, that would be really, really fun if I could get some national assignments, which just means I need to be better, keep growing and, uh, and, and keep trying new things. I'd love to get there one day. Um, I'll make no secret about that because we all strive for that in, in our industry. But you know what? I'm really happy doing what I do now and uh, continuing to grow in, in, in what I do here. OK, you know, if you leave, you have to give up your signing bonus. I'll take that into consideration. <laughs> 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 okay, well, if, if, if there's anyone who, who can make it big from here, it's definitely you, Josh. We, we, we love having you here. Thank you for joining us today, and uh, we'll see you soon in the future. Lance, you're way too kind. Thank you so much, and thank you all for, uh, for watching and sending in your questions.